Hi friends and fellow earth angels, it's Gladys and welcome back to another one of my weekly Sunday card readings. And this spread will start by covering March 6th through the 12th or whenever you're guided to watch as I always intend these to be timeless readings. Meaning whenever it shows up for you or when you're guided to it, that is the time that the messages are meant for you. So welcome. I am back from my retreat in Sedona, Arizona. I went with a group of breast cancer survivors. There were 41 of us and it was a dream. And I'm still processing everything that happened. Um, I feel filled up. I feel energized. I feel super grateful. I feel empowered. Um, I feel enlightened. I got to, um, it's a work pleasure trip for me. So I teach while I'm out there. I was able to do a group reading and I was able to do a private reading and um, teach in a class. Um, and it was just awesome. So I opted out of the last uh, last week's uh, reading to stay in that space in um, in retreat. So um, I know it is the one of the United States spiritual meccas of places to go. Um, this was my eleventh trip out there. It is my home away from home. So if you are ever planning a trip out there, uh, you can always send me an email. I have suggestions on where to eat, where to stay, um, hiking trails, uh, places to shop, um, you know, locations for seeing the stars and sunsets and sunrises and tours and I've done all the things. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, you can always send me a message and I'd be glad to share if you're ever planning a trip out there. Um, I was inspired with some ideas of uh, planning a um, group retreat out there sometime in the future, not for maybe another year or two, um, as it would take a long time to organize in the location uh, that I want to um, bring the group is, is uh, still being renovated, so it's not even available yet. So. Um, that's that. So this, so last week, uh, to recap, uh, we entered the new moon in Pisces, and that was on Tuesday, March 2nd. So we are very much in that energy. The new moon energies are about manifesting. Um, and so this new moon in Pisces gives us a chance to work on that deeper part of ourselves, our mystical side. Pisces energy is like the, the depths of the ocean. There are many treasures, hidden treasures. So if you're uncovering gifts or, you know, you're in a creative energy, we're in a space where all planets are direct right now. Um, we're pre-eclipse season. Um, and so this is a really, really creative time. Um, if you're feeling inspired, uh, if you're in design mode, again, this is a six universal year. So that is um, focuses on home and family and community and friends and creativity and self-expression and healing and connection. That is the energy this year for the planet. Now, whatever number you're in for your nine year cycle, um, that amplifies the six. So um, this is how you can work with these energies that we're in currently. Pisces is also a visionary sign, making this a peak conscious manifesting period. And when I say that conscious manis manifesting, I mean when you are in a space of feeling good or having experiences that you love, being able to drop down in your body and saying more of this in my life or something even better. If you're feeling just a pocket in time of energetic abundance, if you are feeling alive, if you're feeling um, joyful, if you're feeling happy, if you're feeling motivated, um, whatever those, um, 
pockets of feelings um, that you want to vibrate out more. So this is a great time to amplify that energy and declare it with God's more of this in my life or something even better. Um, uh, Jupiter, uh, where does it say? Jupiter is still in, uh, let me see. So the new moon is in the same place as lucky Jupiter. So Jupiter is still in Pisces. Um, I believe very soon it will drop in Aries. Uh, so we have lady luck on our side. So make the most of it. So again, more of this in my life or something even better can be amplified. One quick story. When I was out in Sedona, it snowed probably eight inches on the Wednesday that we were there. It was the first snow of the year, probably the last snow of the year. And of course, it happened when we had about 41 New Englanders. Not everybody was from New England. There were some people from um, other locations, Chicago, LA, but friends, we brought the snow. But it was magical and it was beautiful. And so... One of the experiences that I had was I ended up taking a walk um, with myself in this majestic, right after the snow had stopped, um, and I was coming back from my walk and I ended up wanting to go by the clubhouse because it's up high in the mountain and I wanted to see the view. So I took a walk uh, where the pool is and don't you know the pool was heated there was a uh, dad with his daughter in the pool and the mom was in the hot tub and so I walked over to the pool and I put my hand in the water and it was glorious gloriously warm and I just thanked the the the, the water gods for guiding me there so I ran back to my room and uh, put my bathing suit on and I messaged my friend that was there and I said I'm headed to the pool. It is super warm. Are you up for it? So she said, yes. So I said, I'll meet you there. So I go to the pool and that couple and their daughter were just leaving. So for 10 minutes, I had this big, giant, hot, warm, warm pool all to myself in this glorious uh, resort in Sedona, Arizona. And I... uh, (laughs) I thought this is the perfect time to magnify more of this in my life or something even better. So I was, and at that point it started to snow again. So I was floating in this pool, looking up at the sky as the snow was falling down into my eyes in this vortex (laughs) of a resort. I mean, so the resort that I'm on is a vortex in of itself. And I just started to cry because it was such a beautiful gift from God. And I felt so close to God in that moment that the universe and the stars and the divine were gifting with me, gifting me this, this, this moment in time, in nature, in one of the most beautiful places that I've ever been to, um, time alone with God and it was so expansive it was so beautiful I remember giggling and laughing as I'm floating on my back I was a swimmer in junior high so (laughs) um you know I very much appreciated this 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 joyful time with God and I just felt so blessed and so grateful in that moment um as as you've been following you know I had a a rough last end of last year I had three very significant losses in my life and I remember just thinking about the human experience about how we can go through things that are so sad and difficult and hard to the point where sometimes we think we can't go on and then here I am on the other side of life and the magic and the luck and the wonder and the awe and the beauty that life has to offer. So I want to encourage you if you're in that space of challenge where things are hard, know that you're only, uh, you're in a place, uh, it's only temporary. And that, you know, my anchor, my anchor has always been my faith. Um, God has always been number one for me. Um, and I had a chance to experience the glory of God. And so again, in that Jupiter energy, I declared, God! 
had more of this in my life or something even better. And then I said a prayer for all to feel as alive enlightened and blessed and grateful that I did in that moment and I sent that energy out for world peace I sent that energy out for um, us to understand you know why mother earth is going through hard things why we go through hard things I know on a spiritual level it is an opportunity to grow and evolve but some things are just a tough nut to swallow And for me, when that happens, I really have to lean on my core foundation of my faith and my trust in uh, God's plan and my soul journey and asking, how may I be of service? So I send prayers out uh, to um, to the world, uh, to all that um, are going through hard things. Uh, But I also want to uh, remind you that life can also be so incredibly joyful um, when we're present, when we are aware, uh, when we are open to receiving, right? So, and those are pockets of experiences that happen all throughout life. So uh, if you are in those spaces and you are in those lucky places and, and you're feeling aligned, you know, I encourage you to declare that, especially in this new moon, because you are planting seeds and you are co-creating with the universe. Um, so again, that was just a quick story I wanted to share. Under this new moon, there's a lovely link between loving and abundant Venus and the planet of action, Mars. Mars and Venus are like the divine masculine, divine feminine energies that have been doing this dance uh, in the stars. So if your dreams are to do with making love more often, whatever that means to you, attracting more love or friendship or drawing more abundance to yourself, you most certainly have the stars on your side in this new moon. And I got that information from the Moonology diary by Yasmin Bolin. So I love working with her energy. I also got here a sheep shell. Uh, Let's see if we can see. Um, Sheep shell right here. And on the back, I don't know if you can see it, I chose this. And every single one is different. I chose this because of the all-seeing eye and I saw the eyelashes, and we uh, just dropped into Women's uh, History Month and celebrating women. And I happened to fall on this stone, and it was, it reminded me of the divine feminine, the all seeing, powerful, intuitive, insightful um, goddess, divine feminine. So I don't know if you can see it. I hope you can see it. There's the, um, the white of the eye and there's the eyelashes. Um, but every stone was different and this is the one that I happened to pick up. So I, I had to get it if that is not perfect. (laughs) Um, and luck. Uh, so that is the shell of wisdom and it protects your wealth and brings you good luck, brings joy and spontaneity back to one's spirit, awakens a sense of adventure, uh, facilitates a deep understanding of our inner self. So I put that on the table this week to work with our energies. I did get a few new decks this week, so I wanna share, I'm excited to share with you. I, I love these decks. I've been using them with clients so far and they have been uh, fantastic. So I will start with my uh, pulling an angel and a theme for the week will come from Ask an Angel. This is not necessarily a new deck, but I did take it to Sedona with me. So it is filled up with Sedona energy, Sedona magic. Um, I will getting a message of healing from Crystal Angels. This was also a deck that I took of my own deck that I took with me. Uh, This is a new deck that I got. It's called the Angel Power Wisdom Cards. Um, I had already bought a deck and I had no intention of buying more. I just could not walk away from this deck. So this is a new addition to my collection. And this card that I will pull will be your action for the week. Then I will pull the Oracle from the Oracle of the Angels. And that will be what you're being gifted with this week. 
And then finally, this is another new deck that I got, Healing Energy Oracle. And I will pull an overall message. And these are affirmation cards. So I will pull an affirmation message for the week from the Healing Energy Oracle. And I will link those decks in the description, the notes below. So let's begin. Um, oh, I also got this um, moonstone, rainbow moonstone ring. It's one of those things that um, called to me. And it is what I didn't know. I picked it up. I didn't know what it was, but I knew I knew it was for me. Um, and uh, it turned out to be rainbow moonstone, which is the goddess divine feminine energy. And me being a quadruple moon sign, uh, it was meant for me to take home. So I got plenty of treasure treasures this trip that I'm very much enjoying and grateful and blessed to be able to receive and enjoy. So let me start here. Let's start the reading. I want to open space, inviting in all your guardian angels and guides, the archangels, the ascended masters, the divine mother and father, and all their holy beings of light that would like to assist with this guidance for you this week. I'm going to connect my heart to the heart of the Ask an Angel deck, all the archangels in this deck. And I'm going to ask that any messages that come through be for your best and highest good and the best and highest good of all concerned. All right, so what angel wants to support us this week and what theme do we have for the week? What angel wants to support us this week? Oops, that's too many. You know what? <laughs> no, that's not going to work. begin balance <laughs> oh yes balance in the energy of dokiel beautiful card this week uh balance so we we just came out of february uh the two energy uh which is all about balance and embracing our inner masculine and inner feminine embracing the energy of giving and receiving me being mindful how we're giving and receiving working in our masculine and feminine energy um, and then also to action and being right so um, i would encourage you this week to take a look at uh, your daily activities and check in to see if you are what your percentages are are you 60 40 action oriented giving doing 40 percent being stillness rest pause right receiving um are you predominantly in masculine energy again which is giving and action are you predominantly in feminine energy which is receiving it could be insightful intuition um again i like to connect the words with stillness and pause and rest all gifts uh all all gifts that um that ways that we can be to a appreciate the gifts of the present moment and so if you're feeling short overwhelmed irritable gossipy um uh drama filled or chaotic inside uh, a lot of times um the, for me what i've noticed is that that is a time that i am energetically depleted and I may need to, and I check in, I just go down the list. I may need to eat protein or I may need to eat at that time. Um, I may need to drink water. I may have been working with a lot of different energies and need to do a guided meditation to recharge with um, Mother Nature or uh, the celestial beings. Um, I may need support if I have too much going on. I may need some downtime. I may need some extra sleep. So this could be a really great week for you to check in with how you're feeling. Again, uh, 
in a non-judgmental way, right? Or or not pigeonholing the emotions that you're feeling as good or bad or putting it on something, but just checking in with how you're feeling. And then that inquiry question of Dokio, how may I restore balance in my life? So when I was out in Sedona, I got up and I walked about 10,000 steps a day. We did a lot of hiking. We did a lot of like morning walks or afternoon walks uh, or evening walks, you know, whatever I was inspired to do. Um, And it reminded me that I had not been uh, walking and, and moving my body. And it reminded me of how good it felt to move my body. So I came back with the intention of bringing that back into balance and creating space uh, for regular movement, whether it be yoga or getting on my bike or going for walks, uh, because I was reminded of how good my body feels when I do those things. So again, check in with your body this week and just see how you're feeling. Ask your body what it needs. Ask your home what it needs. Ask your car what it needs right um ask god how may you um how may you uh uplift your energy how how may you um what's the word i want to say how can you become more energetically abundant uh or asking the holy spirit lead me to opportunities lead me to the pathway that can uh, enlighten me maybe it is uh spiritual information soul food that you may need this week so again just kind of throwing some things out there but if you have been going and doing this is a really great week for you to check in And then when you feel balanced, do you feel alive, energetically abundant, abundant in your own bank account or abundant in uh, like love with your partner or family or friendships or you're feeling that support? Again, declaring more of this in my life or something even better as Pisces energy, magical Pisces energy and the new moon and... Uh, the Jupiter, the planet Jupiter is all working on our side and working for us as all planets are direct. So uh, let me see. Dokio, I don't know if this book shares about the different angels. Oh yes, it does. Let me give you some more information. So Dokio, the angel of balance, is known as the weighing angel. In the Testament of Abraham 13, it is stated that Dokio is the angel who is like the sun, holding the balance in his hand, and is also equated with the Egyptian god Anubis, the guardian of the scales. Whenever there is a need for balance in our lives, the angel Dokio can provide assistance. So that is great. So you can invite Dokiel in this week if you are again feeling out of balance. All right, let's see here. So, Dokiel, speaking of balance, that's our, that's our theme to focus on this week. What message of healing do you have working with the crystal energy? What message of healing or what crystal can support the earth angels this week? Moldavite, unconventionality. Your unique qualities are an important part of your life purpose. It's okay to feel and be different from others. I love that. So, you know, with regards to balance, how you do that may be different from others, right? Again, I, through experience, know that, my own experience in working with others, uh, for um, 14 years now, know that uh, earth angels do require more rest, do require more uh, sleep, um, do require more downtime, literally putting your feet up. We need that recharge because we are uh, caregivers. Uh, Earth angels typically work with a lot of different people in service-oriented fields. And um, it's not uncommon for us to unknowingly become chameleon-like in those environments. So it's not uncommon that if you were sitting in traffic on a Monday and everybody was beeping and angry and 
you were feeling that vibe or in that energy, it's not uncommon that three days later that you start getting aggravated, angry, short, and frustrated. Uh, you know, because we're absorbing these energies. It, it, it is it is part of our sensitivities. Remembering our sensitivities are our superpower. So it does require discipline, like a regular maintenance of nourishing um, and recharging your own energy. However that uh, works for you. You know, the crystals are a really great energy to work with. Um, this year, uh, usually my suites that I get uh, placed in for the women's retreat is different. And this year, uh, one of my treats for my suite uh, or the room that I was in uh, was I had a bath. Uh, it was a bath that was separate from the shower and I haven't taken a bath in a really really long time and so I took um four baths while I was there and I was reminded of how good it felt to be in water and the water was so cleansing for my body we had some crystals uh, that we were gifted so I put some crystals in the bath and it was my way to recharge and it was something that I hadn't done in a really long time I mean I'm not gonna lie it was a little challenging to sit still because there was so much energy going on you know but after the second or third bath I had it down to a science and could fully immerse myself in stillness and rest and quiet and peace the theme this week was pause so I embrace that energy and so again how we fill up and how we find balance can be in unconventional ways you know there was a man on the trail who was um three quarters naked <laughs> um he had pants on um but he did not have a shirt and he did not have shoes and he had a backpack that was playing music and um it was the day after the snowstorm and he was so proudly out there recharging his batteries half naked <laughs> so that was totally unconventional but we were like more power to you, dude. <laughs> Go for it. It's funny because I, I think that day I was with five five women and uh, we heard this music coming up. So of course we turned around to get out of the way and we just watched this young man just walk right by us. <laughs> and, um, and again, you know, we just kind of, you find those things in Sedona. And again, this is the unconventional ways that we can recharge and find balance, right? So sometimes getting out of that routine or kind of stirring things up a little bit can help you access different parts of you that you didn't even know that you enjoyed or different things that you didn't even know that you'd enjoy. So maybe trying new things this week. Um, Moldavite is, I believe, from a meteor. And um, I have uh, Moldavite somewhere. I got it years and years and years ago. And it is an awesome stone to, to work with if you have some. So again, your unique qualities are an important part of your life purpose right you are divine personified you are here as an embodiment of unconditional love right and you're here to protect that you're here to emulate that you're here to learn how to play in it and manifest and create in it and you're here to use that energy to heal on deep core levels from your past in this lifetime and lifetimes past so dokiel can help you with that this week how can you flip the script and try new things all right so all right so these are my new cards angel power wisdom cards i'm going to ask what i'm going to ask the angels what can be your action steps this week what actions can you take to support your healing discernment follow your intuition so hmm how do i want to play with this energy practice discernment you know i say that often with um with clients who are asking me what books should they read uh what meditations uh what steps to take forward um what next 
um, whom to work with in specific areas. And I'm a big advocate for practicing discernment because what works for one person isn't necessarily going to work for the other because we're all different. And there is so much information out there, friends. It is inundating. And some of it can be harmful. Uh, Sometimes that's how we learn. Some of it can be absolutely liberating. Some of it you could have outgrown. And so when you're on this pathway of healing, especially in the unconventional way, practice discernment, meaning check in to see, are you being pulled towards something, a book, a video, a teacher, a class, or is there something in you that's creating a resistance, right? Something that you're... Uh, being pushed away from. So for example, let's say somebody calls you up and says, let's go out and do this thing. Maybe it is in a very loud, crowded place and you may be not in that space to be in that type of environment. And so this person says, let's go do this. And if it is in alignment um, and is going to contribute to the quality of life you're creating for yourself, your body will resist against it, right? You might feel that sickness in your stomach or you might feel that, um, you know, that resistance or want to pull away. You might feel a clear no, right, in your body. What happens is a lot of times earth angels will say yes to the things that they want to say no to and no to the things that they want to say yes to. So this is a really great week to practice discernment, pausing. So our theme this year in Sedona was pause, And I taught a whole class about this, about when we're receiving invitations or we're getting ready to take an action, pausing and asking ourselves, is this going to contribute to the quality of life I'm creating for myself? Sometimes that dark chocolate absolutely will contribute to the quality of life you're creating for yourself. A lot of times the cakes and cookies and um, sweets may not contribute to the quality of life you're creating for yourself if you're going to them in an emotional for emotional comfort again so practicing that pause practicing discernment to check in and ask yourself you know it's really uncomfortable to to create space or pause especially when somebody's in front of you waiting for an answer. And I encourage you to practice that. Practice creating space to bring your attention from that person because earth angels, one of the things we're working through here is that people pleasing, right? Saying yes when we want to say no. Again, it's just part of our learning. It's a part of our empowerment. It's a part of our power, right? To set these boundaries in this way. And check in and saying, is this something that's going to contribute to the quality of life I'm creating for myself? Is this something that I'm feeling inspired by and being pulled towards? And again, you may get a yes and it may be unconventional. And you could maybe think, well, what are people going to think? What are people going to say? What are they going to do? So when I took my mediumship training, I took a mediumship training in 2005. Pretty sure it was 2005. I don't think it was as early as 2004. Um, So in 2005, I took my first class ever in spiritual work and I took the mediumship class because I wanted to learn how to connect with my grandmother. I missed her so much and I wanted to know where she is and I wanted to understand what that afterlife was. So I took a mediumship class and I was drawn to the class. I was drawn to the teacher. Um, My mom actually gifted me with the money at the time to take the class and I had no intentions of telling anyone ever that I was gonna take this class. Um, It was something for me, but in order for me to get my certificate in that class, I needed to do five readings. And that's how it started. My teacher, my mentor, um, my spiritual soul sister um, encouraged me to put out a small email out to a group of people, friends, um, and that's how it started. So again, when we're trying new things and it might be unconventional, practice discernment for me, I decided to take that as I felt um, excited about the information I learned. I felt empowered. I felt um, semi-confident that I could <laughs> do readings. And, and again, that's how it started for me. And my just gift developed over all these years. So follow your intuition. One step may lead to another, may need to love another, and may lead to another. 
this week, but you want to check in if, you know, a thousand million people are saying, oh, we love this person. They're so great. (laughs) And you're saying, hmm, I'm not sure about that. There's something to that. This isn't about who's right or wrong. Um, This isn't about, you know, good or bad, positive or negative. This is about something in you is saying that might not be for me. It doesn't mean no forever, but it means no, not right right now because the Holy Spirit or the divine might have other options for you that could be more beneficial. So it does take courage, earth angels, to follow the wisdom of the heart, march to the beat of your own drum and follow your own heartbeat, right? Because it's not something that others uh, in the tribe may understand. So know that you're not alone in that if you feel that way. There's many of us out there and we are all forging forward one step at a time as we laugh and play and sing and dance and heal and grow and cry and evolve. All right, so let's see. What are you being gifted with this week? What are you being gifted this with this week? Angels. Whoa. Okay, let's go with this one. Awakening. Yes. So 29, 11, new beginnings, uh, two energy, right? Uh, uh, two plus nine equals 11. One plus one equals two. Here we are back with two is the number of balance. So you're being gifted with awakening this week again with challenges and difficulties and disruptions. It gives you an opportunity to become more clear of where to shift your sails, right? You want to go in the direction where the wind is carrying you you want to go with the flow right so checking in and here's the diamond energy why does that diamond sound familiar um I don't know maybe I was working with that energy (laughs) um I've done a lot of readings in a short amount of time so maybe I was working with that energy um Anyway, the diamond feels really familiar. Again, this is a precious gem. Uh, This is, you know, our power. Again, uh, the, uh, the angel's hands are open to receiving this week, receiving wisdom, receiving guidance, receiving support in unconventional ways, practicing discernment before we jump all in, check in with ourselves. Is this not what the pack is doing, but is this in alignment and is going to contribute to, you know, the quality of life I'm creating for myself and in that you'll have awakenings right through challenge and adversity and through uh, trials and tribulations even though it is hard to go through those things um when you're present with it there's so much to learn from it your body's wisdom your intuition your soul guidance is always giving you a heads up is always nurturing you in some ways always giving you imagery or memories that are showing you where this comes from like pictures right so this is why stillness and pause and checking in can create deeper levels of awakenings i see now right it's it's like i see it now i get it now uh there's so many things that have just kind of popped up in my life that I didn't see before right because I'm practicing that I was practicing that pause on the trip Um, I was practicing awareness Uh, I was on a trail uh, that I uh, that I go on often uh, while I'm out there and I always seem to have hiccups on this trail I don't know what it is about this trail I've been on this this single track trail uh, a thousand times I'm sure Um, but I always seem to get lost or forget where I'm going (laughs) and I always have to and the and the trail always 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 reminds me to pause so I was going down the mountain and I ended up kind of going into like a dead end that kind of went off a cliff I mean it was safe I mean it wasn't like you know drop cliff but there was nowhere to go and I remember thinking like what how did I do this again I remember stopping and pausing and looking around now I was on this trail it was sunset so the sun was just about to go over the mountains and so I looked off to my right I paused I'm like all right which way do I need to go and I looked over to my right and the trail that I needed to be on was completely lit up from the top to the bottom and it was amazing and I remember saying 
thank you, God, you're so good. And of course, I bebopped it down the trail and, you know, I got out of there. I had one little hiccup where I had a run in with one of those uh, big giant alligator trees or a juniper tree, I think is a, a, it's the way the bark um, the way the bark is, it's, it's, they call it an alligator tree. So I had a run in with an alligator tree and I gave the tree a hug because it was a dead end. I turned around and I found my way and it was super easy. So again, throughout life, we might just be forging forward. We might just be going on. And then we get to a point where we're at, a, we're at a hiccup or a bump or a dead end. And it's a great time for us to pause and just look up and look around. And, and, and metaphorically, I mean, look up to God, look up to the divine, but also look up ahead of you to see where you're going, right? Um, and in that, there's this awakening to new pathways, to new guides, to new mentors and teachers. So this might be a week to try something new, um, step out of your comfort zone. I know earth angels have a tendency to enjoy perfection, right? When we find something and like it, we stick with it and we're really good at it but remember that perfection energy is a comfort zone right when we try new things when we're learning when we're growing we're in discomfort right so and that can be jarring and 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 it can be um uh, uncomfortable for somebody who's used to be in a comfortable space. So you want to have patience and take your time with your journey as you try new things and you're learning and you're growing and you're figuring things out, right? Especially in this new energy that we're in um, that's so high vibrating. So you're being gifted this week with awakening, balance, new beginnings. I love it. Um, all right. And finally, we have how wonderful are these cards uh, they are, once again, the Healing Energy Oracle. Oh, you know what? It's the same guy. I just noticed that. It's the same guy who... These two decks are the same person. I just realized that. These two decks are the same person. So, love it. All right, so what affirmation can support you this week. So this could be an affirmation that you return to. You can screenshot it. You can write it down, um, especially if you're trying new things and making adjustments in your life. You know, here we are in March. Uh, you know, I'm getting that kind of spring fever energy. St. Patrick's Day is coming. St. Joseph's Day is coming. Uh, Easter is coming. You know, all these really springy energies are upon us. So... Um, what affirmation can support you this week that can be an anchor level of support for you? These cards are awkward. <laughs> I'm going to pull this one because it's the one that popped out the bottom. All right. Inner beauty. I love it. And that is the energy of this year. Um, it's the Venus energy, um, the planet of love. It says, I open the eyes of my heart and direct my gaze to the light within every being. Personality and physical appearance are in the image of man. Beauty and goodness are in the image of God. Again, this goes with practicing discernment with what others may or may not uh, see as beautiful, right? Looking at beauty in different ways, divine beauty. And this all also means uh, beauty, beauty within yourself. Um, I would encourage you this week, again, if you have found you've been hard on your body, your mind, your emotions, your spirit, if you've been hard on where you're at in life, um, if you know you've had challenges uh, with um, acceptance, I encourage you to pause this week and ask God to assist you in seeing your inner beauty. You may see that in a baby's beautiful eyes. You might see it in the sunshine. You may see it in uh, laughter. You might see it in two people enjoying their friendship or their romantic partnership. Um, you may see it, you might catch yourself in the mirror and see that beauty you know, within. Um, 
know that any act of kindness uh, that you offer, generosity, any love, any compassion, any empathy that you offer others is a reflection of your inner beauty. Uh, any, um, any prayers that you offer in a genuine way to humanity is also a reflection of your inner beauty. Um, the goddess Aphrodite, uh, the goddess of love, of course, Venus, Guinevere, uh, Mother Mary, uh, Kuan Yin, those are all beautiful divine feminine beings to work with, to support you. Um, angel Jophiel, Jophiel is a beautiful angel to help you see your inner beauty. Um, and that could be something to work on this week, something to bring attention back to yourself. That could be how you restore balance, especially if you have been taking care of the parents, the children, the co-workers, um, the house, uh, the, the neighborhood, um, the partner, uh, whatever that is for you. So again, great affirmation this week to sit with, especially if you're struggling with self-esteem and worth and value. Um, I open the eyes of my heart and direct my gaze to the light within every being. Personality and physical appearance are in the image of man. Beauty and goodness are in the image of God. Remember, we can't possibly understand why people do what they do. You know, everybody's in a different stage. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Um, not necessarily taking sides. Um, we don't always have the whole picture. Um, but I do know the power of prayer can shift worlds. I do know working with the um, Women's History Month, and working with the feminine energy and a spiritual feminist myself working with uh, the, fem the female energies in the Bible, working with the goddess energy, the divine feminine energy, working with the mother energy, being so passionate about the nurturing and the caring and the healing and the connection. Um, I can tell you that energy that you work with can change worlds. So I will just say this one thing, check in this week to see how you may be speaking about others and situations and experiences. Do you feel good and excited and playful when you are speaking and expressing yourself? Or are you in a space of gossip or drama or judgment? And again, it's just a check-in, right? It's just a check-in. And just asking yourself, practicing discernment, do I feel good after I'm in this space? Or do I feel good contributing to this energy, right? And so those of you who are energy workers, those of you who uh, send love and blessings out to the, to the planet, this would be a really great week, especially in this Pisces new moon energy, to imagine the whole entire planet, every single human being, animal, plant, tectonic plates, forest, you know, every single energy stone that has life on this planet, imagine it all filled up to overflowing with that heart chakra energy, that pink or that green energy, whatever you vibrate with. And, and, and from there, you'll be inspired to continue on your own healing journey. And when you do, and you feel good, the people around you feel good. And when they feel good, the people around them feel good. And when they feel good, the people around them feel good. And this is how we invoke peace on earth. All right, friends, I will leave it at that. I am glad to be back. Again, I'm super excited to be back to work. Um, I do, I am booking uh, up um, quite a bit lately, uh, Angel, uh, uh, group readings or mediumship group readings. So if you're local here in Rhode Island or Southern New England, um, the lower parts of Massachusetts, um, if you 
want to get a group of friends together of seven, eight to ten friends together. Um, I can travel to your house. I can do mediumship. I can, you know, if you want to do an angel party. Um, again, these are all done in groups, so you need kind of a larger room. Um, and um, I'm very much enjoying them. I've been doing a bunch of them lately. Um, if you want to do something smaller, um, I can host a group up to six at my after at my office. I've been doing some fun groups of like uh, four, five, and six. Um, you know, of 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 family members, of you know, sisters and moms and cousins, and you know, that's been really great too. So that is available um, as we start to open up um, gatherings. Uh, of course, I'm here for divine guidance, life purpose, private mediumship sessions, you know, combo sessions. If you want to do some deep inner spiritual work, you know, I still offer the, um, uh, like as a spiritual advisor, I offer spiritual guidance uh, to support you in uh, like your spiritual ev evolution and your spiritual growth. So um, I'm hoping to, in April, start doing energy therapies again. I will probably open up with Reiki IET, Magnified Healing in April. So those will go on the calendar. Um, I do have classes coming up. So you can check my website at gladysellen.com for the classes that are available. Again, if you are local. Um, and that's it. Those are my announcements. I... Uh, I send armies of angels to you. I send armies of angels to all those that are challenged on this planet. There's so many places that are in dire need of love and compassion and peace and healing and connection. And I, I pray that the divine assists in restoring balance back on this planet. All right, friends, let me close space, thanking all your guardian angels and guides, the archangels, the ascended masters, the divine mother and father, and all their holy beings of light that assisted with this guidance, especially the angel Dokiel, uh, angels, the Moldavite, Crystal, uh, and I'm going to ask that any healing that was started continue for as long as it needs to be done. And so it is. And those are your messages for this week. I love you. God loves you so much. Trust in the divine. Trust your intuition. And I send you love with heavenly hugs. Bye for now.